Well, hello everybody, welcome into this Adobe Lightroom tutorial, and today, well, you saw the title up there, right? We're talking all about sharpening in Adobe Lightroom. This is going to be like a little bit of, I don't want to call it a beginner's guide, because sharpening is something that I think we all can learn a little bit about. Heck, I'm still learning a lot about it, and I feel like I've learned everything about sharpening in terms of how to do it in Lightroom, but there's always somebody out there who has like some cool new trick to show you about sharpening, and sharpening is so darn important that it's just something we need to know how to do. So we're going to cover... Everything I know about sharpening in Adobe Lightroom today, at least everything I can remember that I know about sharpening in Lightroom, um, I hope I can do that for you guys today. Uh, if you do enjoy this video, make sure you hit the little subscribe button if it's down there, if it's over there, or wherever YouTube has it now. Go ahead and hit that so you never miss another Lightroom or photography-related tutorial in the future. And also make sure you pick up my course. It's all about how to retouch images in Photoshop. I know it's not Lightroom. I'm working on a Lightroom course. But for now, it is about retouching photos in Photoshop. I think you might just like it. And it supports what we do here at tutvid.com, so I'd be super thankful if you pick it up. But without further ado, let's jump into this tutorial. So here we are. Uh, this is actually just a little fun behind the scenes lighting setup, but we're gonna be looking at sharpening this photo and this photo. By the way, would you guys be interested in photography tutorials? I do do a bit of photography as well. Um, anyway, we're gonna be talking about uh, sharpening a portrait, but also just like a random shot here from Central Park in New York City, uh, because I want to talk about some of the different aspects of sharpening and things that are kind of important when it comes to sharpening images. So first and foremost, you may be working in your library panel right now. You can hit the letter D and it's gonna to jump you right over to your develop panel and in the develop panel you can hit command and the number five I believe it is there it is and it's gonna pop open what's called the detail panel now here in the detail panel we have a bunch of details and that's not why it's called the detail panel it's because it focuses on the details and the sharpening and noise reduction of your photo but when it comes to working with this uh, with this little panel Adobe Lightroom has given us this little loop, and this loop is gonna give us a nice detailed look at any part of our image that we so choose. If we click on that little loop icon, we could examine this little person here on the bicycle and see, or maybe we wanna make sure the bark on the tree is sharp, or maybe we do just wanna make sure the top spires of these, these buildings, or really it's one single building, if we wanna make sure that the top of this building here is a sharp, we can just click and drop that loop. Really what you should be doing is up here at the top of the navigator panel, you have the option to view your image at a one-to-one -one ratio, which as the tooltip indicates here is just going to zoom your photo to 100% because when you're working with sharpening in particular you really should be looking at a 100% zoom of your image even if you can't fit the whole thing on your screen you can always navigate around and we can see here the stuff in the foreground is slightly out of focus I'm not really concerned about that I'm concerned about kind of the sharpness here in the middle ground of this shot and what we can do to change that so over here we have a few sliders let's do a quick rundown we get the amount radius detail and masking sliders we're not going to get into noise reduction today the amount slider is just that it do I want no sharpening on my photo do I want a ton of sharpening on my photo I can see a ton of sharpening does a lot of bad things to it um, and it's kind of like an old you know 1998 you know Adobe Photoshop four five six kind of you know add that filter sharpen sharpen kind of sharpening which is not the good kind of sharpening uh, so we're gonna leave this down at about 25 we'll, we'll mess with it in a little bit radius is going to dictate kind of the the size of the edge that Lightroom is looking for how much a, a, around that edge Edge do I sharpen? Because remember, sharpening is simply increasing the contrast around those edge details. The more that contrast is increased, the more they appear to kind of like pop a little bit, and and it makes the image look more crisp. The detail will allow us to focus on just how much sharpening the the very fine details. Pardon my my overuse of the word here. Uh, it will will control how finely the details of the photo get sharpened. So something like a detail of you know almost nothing means that only the very largest of details in this photo will be sharpened. But if I really crank up the detail, even the very fine little tiny, you know, little things sticking out of the top of each individual spire, all of those will get some sharpening applied to them. Uh, and it's, you know, obviously anything in between is just that anything in between. Now masking is really interesting because what masking seeks to do is hide the sharpening from big open areas of your image where presumably all that's going to be sharpened is noise and therefore make your image look more grainy and noisy than it is. So up here in the sky, everything is soft and that's the way it should look. There's no details to be sharpened. Therefore, if I zoom this in here, let's go to like a four to one up here in the sky. Up here in the sky, the only thing that's gonna be sharpened, if I like crank the sharpening way up, you can see, look at that. All that's appearing here is all of this grain. Can you see all that? All of that is grain. If I boost my masking slider, Look at how all that goes away, but I still maintain all that sharpening there up on the trees. If I hit the little on-off switch for my detail panel right there, I turn it off, 
Look at what happened to the trees. They all fall back into like they're almost like they're out of focus. I turn the sharpening on and all those edges are getting sharpening, but I'm not sharpening all that noise in the sky. I'm going to double click these sliders to bring them back to default because now we're going to begin the process of doing like our real passive sharpening here on this image. So a really cool trick and hotkey is if you hold down the Alt or Option key while you're dragging the amount slider, it will temporarily convert your image to a black and white image so you can just more easily focus on what exactly is being sharpened. And I can tell here something between like 70 and 80 is going to look pretty good. It's going to give me nice sharpness on this building. I'm getting good crisp sharpness here on the trees and these leaves and the bark is jumping out. Everything looks pretty good. If I hold that same Alt or Option key while I drag Radius, well here's a good visual rep representation of what Radius does. And sometimes you got to give your image a second or two to sort of, you know, give you a good good preview, but you can see if I crank the radius way up, we're almost going to get this haloing effect. And now if I let go of alter option, you don't straight up see that exact same halo, but you get an idea of where the sharpening is targeting. So I want the sharpening to be kind of nice and tight, something right around a radius, you know, not much bigger than, you know, 0 0.6, 0 0.7 is going to work for us in this image. And now detail is going to be kind of the same thing where it's going to give me this nice, you know, look at that, not much in the way details are being sharpened. If I crank this way up, we're getting everything in there, regardless of how small the detail it's going to get sharpening. So I want to take this back. I want the sharpening to still remain relatively subtle. So I'm going to pull this way down to, you know, between 10 and 20, maybe 10, even between 10 and 15. Whoop, I accidentally hit it again. Let's uh, drag this over. There we go. Something like 10 or 12 looks good on detail. Now, this is really cool. If we hold down Alter Option and drag the masking slider, we get this just white screen. And white, just like you would expect from a mask where white reveals and, and black conceals, white means our sharpening is being applied to every last bit of the image. But as we drag the slider over, we're starting to get black in areas where sharpening will not be applied. And look at what turns black first, the sky. Because Lightroom is smart enough to know, hey, look, all this stuff up here in the sky, it's pretty much the same color. So it probably means there's not many edges that need to be sharpened, whereas the trees and even the details on the building and the details on the grass and the bark on the trees, all of that is being sharpened. So I'm going to pull this over until I just see kind of sharpening on the edges I want sharpening. And just like that, we've sharpened this photo. So I can shut this detail slider off and turn it back on. In fact, I'm going to zoom in to maybe like a two to one so we can even closer look. Here it is with sharpening on. I'll shut the sharpening off. Can you see what's happening to the top of the building? Look at how soft that looks. I turn the detail on. And now we bring out all those little highlights and the roof and the edges and everything looks so much more crisp and it's just absolutely great. So let's walk through this here with a portrait as well. So everything's very much the same. We would zoom into a one-to-one -one at least, and I'm obviously going to be focused here on her face, and we would use the, we can use the loop and we can just target one of her eyes, so we're getting just a very out-of-context eyeball over here that we can check out and you know make sure the eyelashes are looking right and the eyebrow is on fleek, or wait, your, yeah, your eyebrow's got to be on fleek. The eyelashes are something else. I'm not sure what that is, uh, but you know, you got your eyebrow here. You can check out. You got the eyelashes and everything's looking good. So we can go through the same process here where I just hold down my alter option key we check out where we're sharpening and I want to add a lot of sharpness to this photo so we're going to go up something around 100 but I can already tell we're introducing noise into the very texture of her skin so I'm going to just check out where radius is targeting I probably want radius to go up a little higher something like one and a half looks good for this photo but here with detail I think what I want to do is reduce detail because I really don't want a lot of sharpening just in like the pores of her skin I want her skin not to look like it's got some like you know crunchy you know crusted you know glaze of you know uh, ice cream and like, you know, like donut glaze or something. I don't know how to describe it. It's a very like crunchy, bizarre look that the skin will get if you over sharpen the very details of the skin too much. And now here we can go back to fit and we'll hold down alter option and we'll just check to see what the masking does for us. And yeah, I probably don't need too much sharpening back there in the bricks, but I want to maintain sharpening in the details, especially of her eyes, eyebrows, lips, and her sweater. So masking about 31 is going to look pretty good. We can zoom back into a one-to-one -one and just check it out. We can turn our sharpening off. There it is without sharpening, and there it is with sharpening. It even seems to bring the catch lights in her eyes out a little bit more. I'm going to go back to fit up here. Just hit the word fit. It's going to fit the whole image. Now, a couple other things that you may be looking at and saying, hey, if I do this, it seems to sharpen my image. One of those is here under the basic tab, and that's the clarity slider. So if we crank the clarity slider up, it does give the appearance of sharpening by doing this kind of extreme mid-tone punch. Um, but I don't know. The, the, the clarity slider, I mean, I shouldn't say I don't know. I'm pretty convicted about this. 
it just tends to look bad. You can use it kind of sparingly, but kind of it seems like when you get above about 20, you're it's probably not doing good things to your image in most cases. Um, so you probably want to just watch it with the clarity slider. It can do a lot of damage to your photo. It's cool. You know, there's some Instagram accounts that use it really well in terms of making like sports composites and things like that. But in terms of like real deal professional work, mm, clarity slider is probably not really want where you want to go. Also, if I go back to the landscape photo here, under the effects panel, we do have dehaze. And sometimes dehaze can be helpful with sharpening because sometimes when you're looking at a photo and you say it needs to be sharper, it's really just some haze you're seeing, especially with outdoor photos. You're shooting through a little mist and you just need to clear that mist and whatnot away. You can see there's before dehaze, there's after dehaze. It gives this element of my whole photo looks more clear and therefore is gonna look more sharp. Now, I would be careful using dehaze because you know if you're gonna use Use it, go ahead and use it, but don't substitute it for actually going in and sharpening the details of your photo. What dehaze can do is really set you up to get a beautifully sharpened photo in the end. Now, back over here to one of our uh, one of our portraits. If I zoom in on her, I'm zooming into a one-to-one -one again. We can actually do some selective sharpening here in Adobe Lightroom using the adjustment brush. Now, down here, we do have a sharpness option. The issue with the sharpness here is we don't have any other controls. We don't have any radius or detail. Uh, or masking controls, but we can crank up the sharpness. I'll go up, you know, kind of crazy here. I'm actually gonna hold down Alter Option and just hit the reset button here to bring everything back to the middle. And then I'll just throw some sharpness. So I'm not making any other changes. And I will make the size of this brush quite a bit smaller. And then I would like paint the sharpness in over her face. But obviously, I don't know if you can see this, but uh, there's quite a bit of noise there showing up over her face and it's making it look like she has a really, really bizarre skin condition, disease. I don't know what you wanna call it. We can try reducing the noise in that particular area. It's not going to do too much good. We can get out of the adjustment brush. We can go to the detail tab and see what's been done. And we can see here, we can probably boost the masking. Maybe that'll help us hold down the alter option key and boost the masking until we get rid of a lot of that sharpness and kind of weirdness on her face. That's not quite enough masking. We need to really go further with the masking and probably reduce the overall detail sharpening. I can probably bring some of that masking back down a little bit. There we go. That helps control that a little bit more. Uh, but with the adjustment brush, point is, you can do some selective sharpening. So if you have one part of your image that you're saying, hey, everything looks great, but I just want to really sharpen up those shoes a little bit more, you can go in there and add some sharpness to those shoes and, you know, maybe like her fingers and the, the sleeves of her dress or something. I don't know, whatever. Um, and by the way, you also do have a dehaze and clarity slider here if you're looking to even further add a little bit of that effect or either one of those effects, I should say, uh, to add a, a mid-tone punch or boost of contrast to those parts of the image which you are looking to further sharpen as well. All right, so we're almost done here. There's two other little, uh, maybe not quite so used forms of sharpening here in Adobe Lightroom. One of them is, is if I right click on an image and choose to export it and export, we have the option in here, or one of the options is uh, output sharpening. So we we'll sharpen for screen or matte paper or glossy paper, and then we can choose an amount, low, standard, or high. Now, I almost always keep this ticked off. I do know of some people who do use it, and the rationale for using it is if you choose to resize your image when you're exporting it. Let's say you want to, you're sending it to a friend for Facebook and you're saying, look, you really only need like 2048 by 2048 for a great Instagram or Facebook photo. So at the largest my photo is going to be either width or height is 2048. When Lightroom downsizes your photo, assuming you're shooting, I'm shooting at an image that's like 20 or 26 megapixel or something here in, uh, in Lightroom. So it's much larger than 2048 pixels. When Lightroom downsizes your photo, it's also going to kind of lessen the sharpening. So the thought is the output sharpening is great when you're downsizing a photo when you export it from Lightroom. If you're just exporting your sizes at 100%, the way you edited them, you probably don't need to turn this on. But sometimes a standard or low amount of additional sharpening here uh, for the screen in most cases will be just what the doctor ordered. So just gonna make sure you maintain the sharpness that you applied to the image originally in Lightroom. So that's one way. The other way is up here in the print module. Now. I'm sad to say I don't do a ton of printing out of Lightroom, uh, but if you do do printing out of Lightroom, the same thing kind of applies here. Down here at the bottom, you have the option for print sharpening. And this, you would choose, hey, how much print sharpening do I want to apply? Low standard, high, and then a media type. Am I printing on matte paper or glossy paper? Um, and in terms of how to tweak this, uh, I don't I don't really know. I, I've never really gone and played around with the sharpening and tested different prints, but my initial assumption would be you got to maybe start with standard, 
run a print, see what it looks like. If it looks good, hey, you're golden. You stick with standard and you know that's what works for your photos. But for me, I'm going to head back to the develop module here and back to the portrait that we sharpened originally. And yeah, I mean, that's that's sharpening in Lightroom. It's, it's actually kind of a lot of fun. It's certainly very gratifying because every digital image needs to be sharpened. And when you just nail the sharpness, your photos look so crisp and so good and people are going to say wow what lens did you shoot that with it looks amazing and if you're already shooting with a great lens adding the correct level of sharpness on top of it just like mm, it's so good so good so good if you've enjoyed this video tutorial to which it is coming to sort of an abrupt end here if you've enjoyed it though make sure you subscribe to my channel here on youtube check out the uh the how to retouch photos in photoshop course see if it's something that interests you if not hey no big deal um and uh yeah for sharpening in adobe lightroom and talking about output sharpening and sharpening for print or the screen or the adjustment brush and selective sharpening and all that other stuff about sharpening for crying out loud that's it get it got it good nathaniel dodson tutvid.com I'll catch you in the next one.